Hi everyone, Scott here again. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Cisco Packet Tracer 7.6.1.3, the Skills Integration Challenge Data Link Layer Issues. Um, this is basically our starting instructions. So we have a uh, basic topology, logical topology that we need to map out. And our objectives, we use subnet planning, subnetting skills, build our network, we will cable up all of our devices and configure the network. So that means setting up our IP addresses and subnet masks and gateways and our DNS router and then, sorry, our DNS server and then our routing tables. Um, that's probably about as far as I'm going to go in the video. I might show a little bit of testing the network, but doing ping, trace, web traffic, and inspect, I'll leave that up to you guys to do on your own. So you can read through the background and the planning. You can pause the video, take a screenshot, whatever you want to do. I'm going to move on. And I've already subnetted this network out, this 172.16.0.0. So let me pull that up. And here are my subnets. Subnets 1 through 7. So again, feel free to pause it, take a screenshot or something like that. Um, since I already have this down, I'm going to go ahead and move on from here. I'll also post a link to this document on my Google Docs in the description box below the video here. And so following the instructions, we get down to here where it starts telling us how to configure our specific IP addresses for specific ports, etc. So using my subnet information and those instructions, I've mapped out our logical topography. And you can see here I've done the routing information We'll come back to that more towards the end of the video. That'll probably be one of the last things I actually configure. So let's go ahead and get started in the actual packet tracer. Now I want to double check. This may be showing that I've already completed it, so we'll need to reset it. Back to zero. And so this is completely blank slate, exactly how it would be if you just downloaded it and opened it. So I'm going to take this in a counterclockwise direction. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with my Eagle server here. And so based off that logical topology that we have, we'll start by powering the server on. So from your physical tab, you need to go over to the right on this scroll bar and hit that red button. The yellow light above it shows that the server is now powered on, so we can configure it. And since everything's blank, we'll start here. Our gateway will be 172.16.3.62. And our DNS server will be 172.16.3.62. Which is actually also going to be the server's IP address. So when we come to our fast Ethernet port, we'll go ahead and drop that in. And we'll need to adjust our subnet mask slightly here. So it should be 255, 255, 255, 192. And again, this is for the server, and we want to make sure that we turn this port on. In our services tab, we want to turn on HTTP and DNS, and we need to add a record into our DNS here, and that is the eagle-server.example.com, and that address again is the server's address, 172.16.3.61, and then we add that. Make sure our spelling is correct. The first time I did this, I managed to misspell eagle. And that should be everything that we need to configure on our server side. 
So we can close the configuration there and come over to our R1 ISP router. We'll go to our configure tab and we'll start by configuring these ports. So let's go ahead and configure our fast Ethernet 00, which is connected to our Eagle server. We have an IP address here of 172.16.3.62 with the same subnet mask as the server, 255.255.255.192. And make sure that port status is on. Then we configure our serial port, which is going to connect over to our R2 central router. We want to turn it on and give it an address. Based on our topology, we have 172.16.3.98. And it picked up our subnet from the server, and we want to modify that to 255.255.255.252. And then we want to come up to our settings and save our NVRAM. And go ahead and close it. We will come back to do our routing table. So next we're going to configure our R2 central router. So we'll start with our fast Ethernet. We'll turn it on and give it an address, 172.161.254. And our subnet mask will be slightly different, 255.255.255.252. 255 and you can see that we don't have a serial port to activate. So we're going to go to our settings and save this. Then we're going to come back to our physical, and we need to add a card into here. So for this, we're going to use the WIC 1T card. If you select it, you can read the description that it's a single serial connection, even if it is like a legacy serial. It'll work for our purposes here. In order to insert it, you click and drag it, but we'll need to power it off first, which is why we saved our NVRAM to save all of our settings. So we power that router down, click and drag our WIC 1T into that slot, and then power our router back up. If we come back over to, get to configure, we'll see that it's still booting. If you get this message, you can click OK, just close this, and you can fast forward time. It'll fast forward by about 30 seconds, which will give that, time, that device time to finish booting up. That way you don't have to actually sit here and wait for it. Come back over to our, our Configure tab, and we now have a serial port that we can use to connect our routers together. I believe our clock rate is actually supposed to be 64,000, so I'm going to bring that down. And then we'll go ahead and assign our addressing here. IP address 172.16.3.97 subnet mask is going to change 255.255.255.252 and we'll come back and save it again and double check that our ethernet port still has its settings and again we'll come back and do our routing towards the end so I have these configured. I'm going to go ahead and get them cabled up. You can do the automatic cable type, or you can come and find your serial connection. We're going to go serial 0 to serial 0. And then we need to configure our PCs. So let's start with PC1. We'll go over to our configure tab, and we'll set in our gateway and DNS server. Gateway is 172.16.1.254, which is our R2 router port here, our Ethernet port there. And our DNS server is our Eagle server, IP address 172.16.3.61. And then we will go to our fast Ethernet and configure our IP address 172.16.0.1. Subnet mask. It will default 255255, and then we will add .254.0. And we want to make sure we turn that port on. 
And then we can close that and configure one B to follow kind of along with one A. Our gateway is that R2 central router's Ethernet port address. And our DNS server is the Eagle server's IP address. And we want to configure our Ethernet port IP address for this computer specifically. 172.16.0.2 Subnet mask 255.255.254.0 And turn that port on. And for the most part, everything's configured. All we have left to do is our routing between our routers so that our server and computers can communicate correctly. And so we'll go ahead and do our R1 ISP router. We'll go into our configuration tab down to our static routing. And based on the instructions, it needs to be able to route over to our PCs, basically, our student computers. So the network is 172.16.0.0. The mask is going to be 255, 255, 254.0. And the next hop is going to be 172.16.3.97. And we'll add that in. We'll come back to our settings and save again. We we'll want to keep that configuration in case it loses power. Then we'll configure R2 Central. Go to the Configure tab, Static Routing. And it wanted just a default static route here, so it's just going to be 0.0.0.0. .0 and the mask will be the same, 0.0.0.0. .0 Your next hop, however, will be the serial port on our RS, R1 ISP router. And the IP address for that was 172.16.3.98. I want to add that in. And we'll come back and save our two central routers data. And from there, we should be able to check back in here on our instruction page to show 100% completion, showing that this network is now configured correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a simple PDU from computer 1B up to the server. And a lot of the times, the first one will fail. Don't worry about that. Just delete it and run a second one to get your success. The first one fails because of ARP. Don't worry about it for right now. Just know that your first one will fail. Your second one should succeed. And if you want to go ahead and look at the specific... Um, data for each of these packets across the network at each location or device. Come over to your simulation mode and you can see your filters. They haven't pre-configured it looks like so you can just run a PDU across and go forward across the entire network and look at it wherever you want that way. So that way you can analyze that packet and see what's going on as it travels through the network. I'm going to go ahead right here at the end of the video I'm going to show that logical topology one more time here with the routing information for each router. And the seven subnets that we've created for this. And we actually didn't even use some of them. We just set them aside for future use, like our future student LAN for future students, um, future ISP, again for future routers basically or future servers, rather. The point-to-points is for our, s our routers. Alright, so if you need to, you can view this at the beginning and end of the video. I will also post a link to this specific document in the description box. And I will see you in my next video.